వెల్కమ్ టు ద టాపిక్ తెలంగాణ ఫార్మేషన్ తెలంగాణ మూమెంట్ అండ్ తెలంగాణ ఫార్మేషన్ దిస్ ఈస్ వెరీ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ టాపిక్ వీ హ్యావ్ ఎ స్పెషల్ అకేషన్ బికాస్ తెలంగాణ ఈజ్ అ న్యూ స్టేట్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద స్టేట్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ ఫార్మ్డ్ మచ్ ఎర్లియర్ మైట్ హ్యావ్ వన్ టాపిక్ ఇంక్లూడెడ్ ఇన్ ద ఎంటైర్ హిస్టరీ but today we are dealing telangana formation or telangana movement separately as a separate paper in many of the tsps examinations that is why telangana movement and telangana formation is a separate paper and which has a lot of things to be discussed lot of things to be learned and lot of things to be analyzed so telangana formation is because of the movement telangana movement which is a six decade old movement starting in 1950s and ending in 2014 the culmination of the six decade six plus decades struggle culminated in the formation of telangana so why we have to study separately about telangana formation many of the states are there in the country why we talk about telangana formation in a separate paper it is because telangana has distinctive features we will be studying those distinctive features in this first day in this first topic and telangana's prime position or a special position in the entire indian history context is completely unique we are not part of the british indian history we were part of we were just the nizam's dominion or hyderabad state or nizam state whatever we called we were not part of the british indian history so our history was completely different for at least 200 plus years though we have some common history with all the surrounding areas like andhra pradesh of today or karnataka or maharashtra telangana has emerged as a separate distinctive area in the course of time that is why telangana formation deals from the beginning and we have the understanding that telangana is distinct because telangana movement is always talking about one question that is the right of telangana people to rule themselves right of the telangana people to own the resources to have the employment in this area to access all the resources and funds to develop this region this was the thing so telangana movement actually we understand we have this understanding that there is a mantra like thing three words nilu nidulu niyamakalu water resources and employment these three are the crucial or key words of telangana movement in the entire last phase we have seen so these three words nilu nidulu niyamakalu that is water resources and employment sharing of these things or owning of these things are exploiting these things are on the agenda for the last six decades before the formation of telangana but telangana and andhra you can understand rayalaseema along with andhra when i am saying andhra it is the andhra state of 1953 before 1956 andhra plus rayalaseema is equal to andhra or present day andhra pradesh the only claim of andhra unification is or anti telangana movement was they said and they are saying and they said for the past 5 decades that we have only one language telugu so telugu one language so one state but this logic was not applied by fazal ali commission this logic was not the reality for which andhra pradesh state has been formed there are many different reasons we will be studying about in the next classes telangana was merged with andhra in a separate context but telangana people always said we are distinct that is what we are going to discuss today so under telangana identity and i am using the term vibrancy though tspic has given a different a different title like telangana as a distinctive cultural unit and everything i call this as telangana identity and vibrancy what is vibrancy telangana has lots of things to display telangana has lots of things which are completely unique telangana has lots of things which are the result of mixture of different cultures which we don't find in other areas that is why telangana is vibrant and telangana identity is completely separate 
so in this topic we'll be talking we'll be dealing with telangana as a distinctive cultural unit in hyderabad princely state its geographical cultural socio political and economic features and when we talk about the vibrancy people of telangana under people of telangana heading we'll be talking about the castes tribes religions arts and crafts languages dialectics uh, dialects faiths festivals and important places of course talking about telangana important places will take at least 3 or 4 hours of study so i am not talking about that topic today important places in telangana i am not going to touch but in future whenever we are talking about telangana formation some of the areas which are covering here will be understood at the same time in telangana history class you have all the important places in telangana in detail so let's go into the topic telangana is a distinctive cultural unit in hyderabad state what are the different headings under which we can understand telangana's different culture or identity one is geographical first thing is geography why first is geography it's because the earth's formation and our geographical formation our rocks our soil our waters all these things contributed to our uniqueness so we'll be dealing with the geographical features then economic and historical then political and socio cultural all these are flowing one after the other so let's talk about the geographical features of telangana telangana is a very interesting region very important region very crucial region if we forget about the people you just you see the map geography you don't see any people or anything rocks soils rivers and the entire terrain in this entire terrain you can see telangana at a distinctive juncture where this is north of south and at the same time this is south of north means you are having both the unique cultures dakkan now i am using the word dakkan telangana is part of dakkan plateau dakkan is also completely different dakkan plateau is the plateau which is having its unique presence immediately below vindhyas and below the southern peninsula southern peninsula and vindhyas you have this dakkan plateau in this dakkan plateau we have telangana region telangana is the region which is on the northeastern part of the dakkan plateau which is covering around 148000 square kilometers and on north south length it is 770 and east west width it is 515 kilometers means it's a huge area when i am talking about huge area it is not dakkan it is telangana i am talking about telangana plateau is this much dakkan plateau is much bigger so when we talk about dakkan plateau geographically if dakkan plateau is considered as a geographical territory below vindhyas above southern peninsula telangana is the core of dakkan plateau because many things like economic historical cultural and political everything is centered on telangana region you can take one simple example for example hyderabad hyderabad is the junction for the north and for the south also telangana you have to cross through varangal if you have to go to east or you have to go to west so varangal or hyderabad these things which are main junctions in telangana region are exactly located in a at a strategic point that is why telangana i give you a formulation telangana is the core of dakkan and hyderabad is the soul of telangana remember this and this is the mantra for your telangana formation because hyderabad is the key for telangana formation if we were ready to lose hyderabad telangana would have been formed long back but why it could not form why they were not ready to concede the demand of separate telangana is hyderabad so that is why i am again locating hyderabad in telangana and locating telangana in dakkan that is the strategic thing i am doing in geographical territory then we have eastern ghats into telangana we have western ghats also coming into telangana we have plains we have rivers rivulets and forests that is why geographically also it's not simple and plain it is vibrant you have different things but the basic essence of this we will talk about is this is semi arid zone because of the plateau now coming to the 
other geographical features of Telangana, the most important thing is Dakkan Plateau is the oldest plateau on the face of earth. This is one of the oldest places which got solidified when the earth was getting solidified. So, you can see our formation is around 2500 million years old when the earth's crust solidified. And this solidified one, the molten magma, when it is coming out of the earth, hardened under the crust and forming into domes and sheets of granite. We call it as granite. If you go to any village, any rural area or masons, they call it as ganetrai. Ganetrai means granite. Granite is the form of rock we are talking about. Ganetrai is the word our masons use when they are putting the stone in the basement or cutting the, uh, uh, making the stone into pieces, into concrete. Granite is very solid and rock stone. Since this is the oldest area, you have granite here all over the Dakkan and especially in Telangana region. Go to any village, you will find rocks. And very interesting, Hyderabad is a rock garden. If you go to many areas still, where rock is still present, where it, uh, it the rock areas or rocky regions were not engulfed by the real estate, you can see the rocks. We have different types of rocks. We have mushroom rock, we have tortoise rock. There is a Save Rocks Society in Hyderabad, which is working on the preservation of rocks of Hyderabad. Why I am talking about rocks is, this is our geography. Rocks are our identity. This is the solid region. And the region which is having rocks will beget a civilization. Remember this. I will talk when I am talking about history or other topics. Solid rocks and rivulets or rivers or streams. This is the very, very congenial atmosphere for the civilization to beget, civilization to come up, civilization to grow. That is why Telangana has the ancient civilization in this Dakkan region. We will talk about this in detail in Telangana history or some other topic. But this is the important aspect about geography. Then Sahyadri ranges which extends from northwest direction into Adilabad and eastern ghats will extend into Khammam. If you imagine the map of Telangana, you can see Adilabad as one side and Khammam on the other side. These two ranges are extending into Telangana. This is the only state where east and west, both ghats are meeting into one state. And eastern ghats in Khammam, we call it as Papikondal. Now it is going to be submerged because of Polavaram. That is a tragedy. Then, about the borders, we have Maharashtra to the north, Chhattisgarh to the east, Karnataka to the west, AP to the east and south. To the east means you have this east. From Kamam, you have East Godavar and these areas, West Godavari. And this side, you have south, you have Rayal Sima regions. Mahunagar to west, you have Rayal Sima regions. And our rock formations of Telangana is known as Gondwana rocks, remember. Gondwana region, one of the old thing we are talking geographically, that is Jurassic Age, before, much before Jurassic Age. You have Gondwana formation, Australia, Africa and Telangana and the part of India, this is together and gradually drifted away and we call this as Gondwana region and the Gondwana rocks is another term we talk about with reference to Telangana. And because of this oldest formation and one of the richest soils and these things, you have iron ore, you have dolomite, we have granite, coal, limestone, etc. Each district, there is no district in Telangana which has which has no, uh, what you call, uh, ore or something, metals. You have one or the something. If you don't have many things, you have limestone. Go to Vikarabad, we have limestone. We have Shabad stones for flooring. That is Rangaradi district. Like that you have different rich mineral and natural resources in Telangana. Then coming to our rivers, Godavari Krishna, as we know, the biggest rivers, which are which are being shared with Andhra Pradesh too, which we are sharing with Maharashtra or Karnataka too, because that is the above and below we have Andhra Pradesh. Krishna and Godavari, both rivers are our lifelines. We will talk about why these are lifelines when I am dealing with history. Then coming to the other rivers, Upanadulu, rivulets like Manjira. Manjira, which is another important river, which is merging with Godavari, and Penganga, Vardha, Vainganga, these things are merging to form Pranahita. Pranahita is a river which is, which we, that is really the wonderful name Pranahita. Pranahita, life, 
a friend of life. Pranahita is the river which is meeting Godavari at Kaleshwaram that we are calling as Triveni Sangamam. So Pranahita and we have many other rivers like Maneru. Krishna, Krishna, when we talk about Krishna, Krishna is Mahabub Nagar and Nalgonda. Huge area, we have Mahabub Nagar and Nalgonda. This complete valley is rich in biodiversity, rich in cultural diversity too. In Telangana history, we talk about Krishna Valley with reference to the latter phase of Buddhism with a large extent. So Krishna Valley has the Paleolithic cultures and this one. We will talk much about when I am going to deal about the history. Then Musi, starting from Anantagiri Hills and merging with Krishna at Vadapalli in Nalagonda. And Vadapalli at Vadapalli, it is merging and it is entering into sea as part of Krishna. So Tungabhadra, which is flowing into Mahabub Nagar. And many rivulets like Aleru, Bikeru, Munneru, Paleru, Musetivagu, and rivers like Kinerasani, which are important and flowing into Bhadrachalam, Kothagudam Bhadrachalam district today. Kinerasani, a big dam. All this Kinerasani is another river. Like that, these rivers are very, very important resources of water in Telangana. Then coming to our economic features of Telangana when we talk about economy. What is the basis of economy? What do you, what aspect do you call it as economy? Basically, agriculture is the first aspect of economy. Commerce, trade, industry, these things are the development in the latter stage in the whole society, in the whole world. So agriculture is the basis for economy. So when you are talking about agriculture, our agriculture is based on the type of agriculture which is done in semi-arid zones. Semi-arid tropics like that. We have ICRISAT. Do you know what is ICRISAT full name? International Center for Research on Crops of Semi-arid Tropics. That is ICRISAT. Semi-arid. Remember this word. We are not in the delta. We are semi-arid zones. Rain-fed and dry areas. So semi-arid zones, we have separate type of agriculture. That is why apart from paddy, we grow jawar, jonalu, millets, cereals, oil seeds, trunadhanyalu, papudhanyalu, oil seeds, nuneginjalu, cotton, sugarcane, fruit plantations. You have a wide variety of plantations as a mixed crop. This is the vibrancy and tragedy is now we lost it and we are completely into monocrop. That is what we will discuss when we talk about other things in Telangana, like agriculture, crisis in agriculture. But what our geography gave us, our geography gave us a vibrancy. That vibrancy is nothing but you can grow a wide range of a basket where you have a wide range of food grains, wide range of millets, which gives the perfect nutritional value to your body. Unfortunately, we lost it and we are eating only carbohydrate of rice and we have our sugar, diabetes and all those things. Telangana was eating jowar more than paddy. That is what our semi-arid crop pattern and food habits are. Then, when we come to rural scenario, what are the best uh, big things or uh, basic things for economy? One is agriculture. Second thing is artisans. Agriculture is one thing and artisan cast, artisans are another thing. Artisans are dependent on rural economy in the beginning and they grow as production centers and finally come into factories in the next stage. So our rural economy is agriculture, artisan based and mining too. Mining is another aspect. Mining need not be the modern mining. But even in ancient times or medieval times, mining was there. Mining definitely was a pattern of economy. And our agriculture is mainly dependent on rains and river basins. So we have a special feature that is we have to depend on minor irrigation through tanks, wells, smaller canals. Plateau, when water is going, water always flows down. This is a plateau, which is on higher side. So you can't have water flowing to up. So what we have to do? We have to, we have to uh, lift the water. Now we have lift irrigation schemes. But in those days, you don't have lift. So we have lift systems which are traditional. But that is river based. But what about the substitutes? In semi-arid zones, when river is not in full stream, our only, our best 
resources are the minor irrigation resources. What are the minor irrigation resources? We have wells. Every village had well. According to some statistics, in early years, that is early years of uh, early years of 19th century or 20th century, every village had 70 wells in every village. We don't have 70 wells. We have 100 bore wells, which is squeezing the water from the groundwater. So 70 wells per village. Mota baulu we call, or cheda baulu, mota baulu. All these are sources for our water. And tanks, cheruulu, kakatiya period, the best period. And apart from Kakatiya, the people who were, who were ruling smaller region along with Kakatiya, Kanduru Choda, these people focused on the tanks. They have constructed tanks. They maintained it. And tanks were very important for them. That is why agriculture in Telangana could flourish. And connecting the tanks with small canals, rivulets, and major rivers. You have a network of irrigation. This is our economic feature. Irrigation is an important aspect of economy. If you don't have irrigation, you don't have agriculture. So, Telangana depended on this. That is how we are different from Andhra region. To some extent, we are similar with Rayal Sima. But with Andhra region, we are completely different. Andhra's development of economy in terms of irrigation has taken a different mode. So, Telangana's irrigation is different. That is where in Telangana formation paper, we will be reading why the irrigation sector of Telangana was completely ignored and what were the fallacies of the policies. Why minor irrigation was ignored. If you ignore minor irrigation, Telangana will diminish. Telangana's agriculture will not flourish. This is what we have seen. So, this is the basic features of economy of Telangana. Next. Economic features of Telangana, if we talk about trade, since Shatavana times, trade flourished. We have Roman gold coins. Where did we get Roman gold coins? We got Roman gold coins in Kondapur, present Sangharedi district, Yeleshwaram, Nalgonda district. We have got gold Roman coins in Dhulikatta, that is Karimnagar district. So, we have Roman trade in Shatavana times. It means our trade flourished. In Telangana history, we will be talking about our cloth was going to Roman Empire and they were giving us gold and silver. And in their Senate, they were talking about it and the debate was going like this. We are shamelessly giving away our gold and silver to them, them in the sense, Shatavahanas, that is our people. Shamelessly giving the gold and silver to them for the want of a thin cloth like cobweb. So, very thin, very thin, beautifully woven, woven cloth, that is, the trade was going on. That is what these people are saying. So, Shatavahana period, we traded with Roman Empire. And till middle of Asaf Zahi period, till the entry of British, till the subjugation of these areas by British are making them dependent, we were trading with the entire world. This is very important. Our knives were going to Damascus because we could produce a best quality of woods and steel and woods and steel best, best quality will definitely give you the best sword which very sharp edge. And we, our swords were sold in Damascus market till medieval period. So, industry developed till the last phase of Asaf Zahi period and artisan class flourished. These are the trade related aspects. But to conclude, what do I say is, this is a feudal region or feudal state. Always it is a feudal state. Feudal means kings are ruling. Till 1948, there was Nizam. He was a king. He is a feudal Raja. He is not a democratically elected one. So, feudal state and the mode of exploitation is feudal exploitation. In feudal exploitation, the rural agricultural scenario will be exploited by the landlords. That is the basic character of Telangana. <coughs> that is why when you have seen Telangana arm struggle in 1946 to 51, we are talking about the feudal exploitation and struggle against feudalism. So, remember this as this is one of the key economic features of Telangana. Lots of things are like how revenue things are there, but that is not part of economy. If you understand this economy, revenue or different methods, different types of tax collection, tax collection that will form the economy. So, this is the economic feature of Telangana. 
then coming to historical features historical features is very very interesting telangana as a whole has a history from prehistoric times we have stone age cultures stone age culture means lower paleolithic upper paleolithic middle paleolithic all the paleolithic ages and very interestingly we have our own dinosaur no other areas in this region found a dinosaur skeleton and we are having it in hyderabad our dinosaur is cotasaurus yemanpalensis dinosaurs fossil completely fossil dinosaur skeleton is found in adilabad district yemanpally that is of jurassic age jurassic age dinosaur is found in adilabad that is why our age our pre our history goes back to prehistoric periods so prehistoric period we have two river valleys godavari and krishna this godavari and krishna river valley these two river valleys are begetting a civilization greater civilization what is this greater civilization means if you have river valleys you have rocks it is not completely flooded region it is not delta it is not forest then that is convenient for the civilization to grow that is why if you see all the civilizations whether it is egyptian or chinese or mesopotamian or indus valley we see it is not on the heavily flooded regions it is the regions like this only that is why civilization has grown lower paleolithic to upper paleolithic we have different stories to tell and krishna and godavari both the regions have evolved the paleolithic tools and paleolithic to neolithic i am talking about the latter period neolithic from neolithic means that is the last stage of the stone ages in neolithic period you have iron age in telangana iron is the is the major aspect which has given telangana the edge to begin a first kingdom that is shatavahanas and we have iron where did we find we are finding these iron tools in megalithic burials megalithic age is not different from iron age iron age megalithic age neolithic phase these are same neolithic is the last phase new stone age in the new stone age we has we have iron age and iron age is always in telangana a megalithic age too what do you mean by megalithic we have big boulders which are kept on the graves canes means circular boulders kept in a circle or menhirs a tall stone as a memorial pillar or dolmens a house like structure with four slabs and one roof with holes on four sides and grave inside cist burials all these are megalithic burials so these megalithic burials are nothing but the telangana or dakhani culture imported where you have this great megalithic culture in telangana you go to any village you will find megaliths completely that is what i can say you don't have megaliths as much as as many as you find in telangana or dakhan plateau anywhere else in the country so we have megalithic culture we have rock art pandavula gutta is a much bigger rock art complex pandavula gutta you have from paleolithic to some mesolithic to kakatiya period you have paintings rock art paintings are there in pandavula gutta that is those paintings are giving us the understanding of how people lived in those periods paleolithic is ranging from 2 lakh 50 thousand years old and come up to 50000 at least if you take back this history to around 50000 or 60000 also we have a continuous history of this period till mesolithic uh, neolithic phase so we have rock structures we have storage cultures and we have prehistory then coming to the next historic part we have shatavahanas before shatavahanas we have pre shatavahana kingdom pre shatavahanas then ikshvaku ప్రీశాతవాహన శాతవాహన ఇక్ష్వాకు విష్ణుకుండి విష్ అలాంగ్ విత్ విష్ణుకుండి యూ హ్యావ్ వాకాటక బాదామి చాళుక్య రాష్ట్రకూట వేములవాడ చాళుక్య కళ్యాణి చాళుక్య కాకతీయ బహ్మని కాకతీయ పద్మనాయక బహ్మని కుతుబ్ షాహి అండ్ ఆసఫ్ జాహి సో దీస్ డైనాస్టీస్ ఆర్ కింగ్డమ్స్ ఫ్లరిస్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ తెలంగాణ తెలంగాణ ఈజ్ హ్యావింగ్ ద స్ట్రాంగ్ బాండ్ విత్ ఆల్ దీస్ డైనాస్టీస్ rashtrakuta do they have the capital in maharashtra rashtrakuta culture is maharashtra or karnataka that area and we have vemulavada chalukyas to represent rashtrakutas like that in dakkan plateau telangana has a great link and we had a continuity in all the dimensions all the periods we have great 
kingdoms like Shatavahana, a big empire, Kakatiya, Kutub Shahi and Asaf Zahi. Hyderabad or Telangana has given these four kingdoms. That is the distinctiveness of Telangana. So, this is nothing but a connect between North and South and played an important role in Dakkan polity in medieval period too. When we talk about Asaf Zahi, Kutub Shahi or Bahamani, we have played an important role. And in the last phase, continued as a princely state under the British rule till the last phase. Till the last phase means even till 1948. India became independent on, 19, on August 15th, 1947. And 1947, Hyderabad was a separate country. It was not part of British India, so it was not part of Indian independent territory. So it was part of the princely state. So from the beginning, you have a distinctive feature. How it is different from Telangana, how, how Telangana is, sorry, cut it. How Telangana is different from Andhra in terms of history, we will discuss in the latter segment. But understand one thing, historically, Telangana has its beginning in prehistory, in Paleolithic periods and a continuity in both Krishna Valley and Godavari Valley. Krishna and Godavari Valley, if I am saying, include Manjira or Musi or Tungabhadra or all the rivulets and other things as a network of rivers. So, these rivers and this geography has given rise to Telangana in historical times.